Hi, how is everyone? I pray you are doing well. My name is Latrice Bartley with Beauty and Purpose and I am purposely living. Listen, I apologize for the delay, but I must really have some good encouragement for y'all because I have had every issue that you can have. And as you can probably tell, I am in my car because everything was going wrong. Appointments was running over, but y'all know I don't let none of that stop me. I will come from my car in a minute. So welcome to today's midweek check-in. I want to check in with you and make sure everything is going well with you. But I also want to encourage you. So let me just first say that I pray you are purposefully living today. And you probably are saying, Latrice, I noticed you are saying purposefully live every day, all the time. What is that about? Purposefully living is about being intentional, about being deliberate in everything that you do. You have this big old day today, and we already at the halfway point, kind of noon. But listen, it is choosing to say, Lord, I need you to show me what is the priority. Show me how to focus. Show me how to leave a handprint on this day. Whether it's just raising your kids and how you fix that lunch or serving, you know, someone that maybe you're volunteering or maybe you're working, you're nine to five and you go in with a smile every day. It is knowing that God has something for you to do in today. So for you to purposefully live, guess what you have to do? You have to acknowledge him. You have to in all your ways, not some of your ways, but all of your ways say, Lord, show me how to walk this day out. Because if you're like me, listen, I wear a lot of hats and you already have a calendar full and you have a schedule. But did you know that you can wear all those hats? You can be a mom, a wife, an entrepreneur. You can do so many things and still not be doing your purpose. Yes, imagine that. But as you give your day to him, I cannot tell you how many times, even today, because I was freaking out. I'm like, Lord, I'm supposed to be on at 12. And y'all, y'all know what I always say, stop, sit, and seek. And it's not about two hours praying. I need to be in the corner calling out on God. You have those moments, but it's just simply stopping to say, Lord, I invite you. I invite heavenly intervention in earthly matters. And I don't know about y'all, but I need every day heavenly intervention in earthly matters. So I want to encourage you in this check-in to just stop. Maybe sometimes like I do, you got out of bed, hit the ground running. You had kids that woke you up. You got a little bit behind schedule and that's okay. But every hour is an hour is a moment that we can just stop and say, I need you. And so that's what purposefully living. So I want to jump right in to what God gave me to encourage you because as I'm talking about purposefully living, right? We all have, or maybe some of us have said, Lord, what is my purpose? Lord, what am I being to do? Or maybe we have not directly asked about our purpose, but we want more, right? Um, maybe you want to get married. Maybe I'm tired of dating this way. I want the right guy. I want a job, a career change. I want to see growth in my life. I, there's things that we're always wanting and needing, but a lot of times it's want. It's not necessarily a need. And so there's some things that we might ask of God. You know, Lord, I, I'm, I'm ready. I want to be a millionaire. I want to be debt free. We have a lot of requests, but I want to take you through a story. And I just need you to follow me a little bit because I'm going somewhere and you'll see me looking a uh, uh, look down. I have my iPad. But I want to take you to a story because I thought about the Lord brought back to my heart how a lot of times we make requests, right? God, I want to be debt free. Lord, I need you to do something. This job, I know there's more. I want this next phase. We want things, but we're not ready for the process. We're not ready when he say, okay, and the method that he decides to take, that's normally not what we had in mind. And so I want you, when you get an opportunity to read Genesis 19, and that's where I'm going to come from today. And I'm going to give you kind of the backstory because this is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you've heard the story, we had a city that was evil. I mean, evil, full of wickedness. And so God is about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background, so just follow me. And we have two angels that come in, um, Abraham's 
nephew Lot is living there. And on this particular evening, Lot sees these two angels. And so he kind of has a conversation and tells them, you know, come in, let me refresh you, let me. And they were like, no, but he kept pursuing. So they said, okay. And I want to say this part because I want you to understand why they were going to be destroyed. So the angels go in and y'all, the men of the city, and in and the Bible, it says young and old, the men of the city came to Lot's house and said, we saw two men in there, bring them out so we can have sex with them, bring them out. And so Lot literally comes out the door and he like, y'all, if I could paraphrase you embarrassing me, like you wickedly acting. No, not these two men. Listen, the men was about to come for Lot. The angels had to snatch Lot back in the house because these men like, we don't care. Lot even, he offers them his two virgin daughters. Like, first of all, that mindset. But he like, listen, leave the men alone. I'll give you my two daughters who haven't been with a man. I mean, we dealing with crazy people, but you're going to offer your daughters up. That's another story for another day. But they didn't care. They wanted these two men so that they could have sex with them. This is how wicked the people were. And so the angels had to snatch Lot back in. And look, they were like, they literally had to blind. It says they struck the men outside with blindness just so they wouldn't barge in on the door. And so the angels like, y'all, we got to go. The Lord has heard the outcry of this city and he's getting ready to destroy it. So here is where I'm going because I want you to understand how bad the situation was, okay? So now when we go to Genesis 19, verse 16 through 17, it says, and while he, and he's talking about Lot, lingered, I want you to listen to that word, lingered, the man took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him, Lot, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. Then in verse 17, it says, so it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, these are the angels talking to him, escape for your life. Do not look behind. I want you to pay attention to that. Do not look behind you nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains lest you be destroyed. Now, let me just say, let me kind of go a little bit ahead of that story. This is now the angels telling them, look, you got to get out. We getting ready to destroy. The Lord has heard the outcry. Lot tells his son-in-laws, they think it's a joke. They think it's a joke. They don't even pay attention. Morning comes and the angels are like, you getting ready to be destroyed. We're telling you to leave. Make a choice. It's to the point, y'all, that he lingering. Now, nah, they telling you, we trying to save your life, but he's still lingering. And I want you to understand the definition of lingering is to hesitate, is to wait. And so we have this major situation where basically judgment is about to happen but lot kind of like uh do i want to go or do i not want to go and so the people they got to literally take his hands of his wife and children now where i'm going with this is let's go back to what i just said sometimes we ask god for things lord i want to be debt free lord i want a husband lord i want this new face god i want better for my life and the lord says okay I'm going to do that. So I, you want to be married. What I'm going to require you to do is be single for a year because I need to work on you because you think it's the man, but actually you're not marriage material yet. So I want you to be by yourself for a year and let me do some things. We linger. No, that wasn't what I was planning on. Lord, I want to be debt free. Okay. I'm going to put you on a six month spending fast. I want you to begin to save 20% of your salary. No shopping? We linger. Uh, no, Lord, that ain't what I want to do. I, you saying you want to go to a different place in me. You want to grow in me. But I noticed that you feed on a lot of stuff that's not going to take you where you're going. Starting with all the housewives. You like the ratchet TV. I want you to cut out ratchet TV totally. We linger. We hesitate. Wait a minute. See, it's easy to look at this situation and look at Lot and think Lot crazy. 
But sometimes we have to kind of look at where we are because we make requests. We want this purposeful life. We want to be great. We want to do things. But God always requires something and that we don't want. We don't want the process. We just want to get to the, you know, Lord, give me the end, but I don't want the stuff in between. And that's not how it works. And y'all, it blew my mind when I was reading this because I said, oh my God, like, these people are trying to have sex with the man young and old he throwing his daughter and he trying to figure out why he should go the very fact but here's the thing lot had become too comfortable y'all he was lingering because guess what he was loving what he was in see when you hesitating like that you got to kind of sometimes it jolts you to say what's really going on and that's what i want to encourage you to not hesitate y'all not we ask god for things but you have to trust his process you have to trust that he knows who he created you to be and so he is doing some things and he's going to always require a sacrifice but are you going to linger and i want to stop here and and just give you a if i could say a news flash because sometimes we move slow you know we hesitate lord i'm gonna do it i'm gonna just do it when i'm ready but delayed obedience is still disobedience slow obedience is still disobedience because when god tells you to do something you have to do it and so y'all this thing just blew my mind because i began to think about how we sometimes myself included have said lord i want this and then when he started taking you down that process you're like I ain't asked for this. I, you know, listen, I go home. I go a little bit closer to home. I think about my daughter. I always wanted a little girl. And I remember the phase that I kind of said, okay, we through. You know, I had to just answer the question, do you want three kids? Because you, you're not guaranteed a girl. And y'all there and I said, hey, we're happy with the two boys. I'm about this boy mom life. Love my boys. But deep down, I'll be honest, I wanted a daughter. I'm such a girly girl. I felt like, okay, I want to put bows in her hair and we can go. I wanted that mother-daughter bond, mother bond like I have with my daughter. And I remember the days I cried and I prayed, but I released it. I really did release it. I said, God, I trust your plan. So fast forward four years. <laughs> I didn't see me getting pregnant, number one, how that happened. But number two, what I went through for Olivia, I was like, say what now? Like, what you mean I got a rare condition? What you mean I need to choose between a life? What you mean you want me to abort my... Y'all, I never saw that process. But that process birthed so much in me. It birthed my businesses. It grew my faith. It, oh my God, so much had just happened. But I don't believe that that whole situation caught God by surprise. The Lord knew what he was doing, but he said, I'm getting you ready. There's some things you've asked me. I got a time and you don't know that it's going to be four years later, but I'm doing some things in you. And so I was able to walk through that wilderness time, not because I'm so great or I had this. No, it was nobody but the Lord. It was the strength of God in me. It was the circle that God put around me. It was the women that I had that was feeding me, that was pushing me. And so God did so much in that. And so I want to encourage you today because we linger. We want these purposefully lives, but we hesitate. We don't want to do what God says. We want to go to this place, but what you mean you want me to turn off the television three weeks? What you mean you want me to just start reading? Like, I mean, my me time, I like my Netflix shows. I like the, like, you want me to not watch TV for three weeks straight? Like, nah, Lord, I can't do all of that. See, we, we want this place, but we don't want to do the work. And like Lot, we hesitate. But what I want you to see more than that is I love that the Lord was showing me something and it's the word called idol. And I know, you know, many of us wouldn't say we idol worshipers. I mean, we know, you know, no, uh-uh. I love, you know, I love God. You know, I love God. Not love him. I love God. He's ahead of my life. Ain't nothing apart. No, I know. Listen, my life is given to Jesus, right? But I love the definition I heard of what an idol is an idol is a noun it is any person place or thing that sits in the place that the lord should be sitting in let me say that again it is a noun it is a person place or thing that sits in the place that the lord should be sitting in so now let's now that we know what an idol is we probably got a lot of people that's idol worshipers because is your job or your check 
really your source and not God? You know, are your children this marriage, the guy that you're dating, the Lord said, I have better for you. And you like, uh, -uh I can't be by myself. I can't, you can't let that relationship go. So is it an idol? Are you loving this thing more than you're loving him? And so y'all, we have to really take time to evaluate, to do, to, to allow God to say, God, show me me, wash me. And here's the beautiful thing about a relationship, not religion, because I don't care that your grandmama was a pastor, your cousin went to church, you were prophesied over 20 years ago. That's great. Okay. And I'm not trying to be funny, but it's a relationship. It's not about religion. It's not about, I've been in church 20 years, but where has your life changed? Where has Jesus come in your life and did a whole new work? And I'm not just talking about spiritually, but God, y'all physically, do you know God is the best business partner ever? Do you know that God can show you how to be a boss? He will give you ideas that people sit up all their life and spend millions of dollars to networking. How can I get in this circle? And it's not even for you. But God knows what he created you to do. He knows who needs to be in your circle. And if you would just acknowledge him, he will link up everything that you need. But again, we want to do it our way. We don't want his way. And so I want to encourage you through this story, y'all. First of all, what are you loving? What's taking the place that he should place? What's sitting high? What is an idol in your life? What person, place, or thing are you loving? You keep saying, God, this year, God, I want to go high in you. I know you've been calling me to write this book. I know it's been burning in me. This story is in me. But you can't write the book because you can't turn off TV. You will not give him two hours out of the day to just sit quiet and let him speak. But you want a place in him. God shows us, but we hesitate. We linger because something else is sitting in the spot that he should sit in. So that's what I want. And when you look up the definition of linger, linger is defined as procrastination. It is um, defined as reluctance to leave something. A synonym of it is to hesitate. So again, delayed disobedience, slow disobedience. I mean, slow obedience, slow, um, delayed obedience is all disobedience. Now, I want to take it a step further because in Genesis 19 and 26, it says, but his wife, Lot's wife, looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Y'all, first of all, so you got a group, they got the whole Lot's hand. I mean, the scripture says like they grabbed his hand. His wife, and they had instructions. The angel said, go and do not look back. But here's the thing that I want you to see. She was loving that, that lifestyle, that culture, that this wickedness. She had gotten too comfortable. All of them had in a society, in a culture that was against the things of God. Uh, they had turned away from God, but they were too comfortable. She, he, look, he don't even want to go. He hesitating. And she looked back and he told her don't. And it says she became a pillar of salt. And I want to bring that out because we have to understand that when we don't obey God, when we hesitate, when we linger, that there are consequences. There's things that we will miss out on. There's sometimes the season pass you by. You can't even go back and get it. That doesn't mean God won't open up. He's the God of a second chance, but that chance might have passed you by because we don't obey but she was given a direct order and she disobeyed and i believe her becoming a pillar of salt y'all it was likened to a permanent monument if i could say a teachable moment of what it means when you disobey god what it means when you go against god and first of all it's also to show you how attached she was to the things of this world so I want to encourage you that when we're purposefully living our life, when we're making all these requests, you know, first of all, be careful what you pray for. Know what you're praying for. Know your God. Because he always, he's faithful. He is reliable. But y'all, the scripture also lets us know he don't think like us. His ways are not our ways. His path, how he goes about it is never what we sign up for. But here's the beautiful thing. When you know God, you know that he really is working it out for your good. You really know that his plans for you are not of evil and disaster, but he really is going to do this thing for your good, that he knows you're expecting in. And so everything that you're dealing with, every obstacle, every challenge, 
it serves a purpose but we can't hesitate y'all we can't linger and miss out and so i just wanted to share that with you because i said this in um in legacy of love and i want to bring it out again because sometimes i'm not included i gave you my olivia story but i want to give you another story and i shared this on legacy of love with um, my godmother's episode I remember a, a period, again, I had been praying. I had been saying some things to God, but I'm even reminded God don't do everything the way I want it. You know, I kind of have in my mind, Lord, then let me help you. This is how this would work great. But I went through a period that so much was happening at one time. And I remember this particular morning, my godmother just happened to call me and I just broke. I just started crying. I was like, this is happening. This is happening. I told God this. And she was very quiet. And at the end of all that I said, she said, you missing it. He trying to give you everything. That's what she said. And I got quiet. She said, and she began to show me in each instant that I was missing his hand because I was so focused on the issue and, but this and that. And she said, but you don't see it moving this, this opened up. And when this happened, this allowed you to do this. He's trying to give you everything, but because it's not the way you want it to come, because it's not the way you had in your hand, you, you can't see his hand. And so y'all, I want to say how that just changed my perspective. It changed my perception. And I want to encourage you that you've got to know your God. And the only way you can know him is by getting in this word, by taking the time to study God's word. And I want to tell you, don't hesitate. Don't linger. Don't be loving the things. So again, be honest. And I, and this is what I started saying earlier. It's not about religion, it's about relationship. And I wanted to bring that out because when you're in a real relationship, you can be you. My true girlfriends, my husband, I don't have to come home and put on air. I don't have to come home with the people that love me and be somebody, I'm who I am. They know me, they know the good and the bad. They know all of it. But you don't have to put on air, but guess what? Neither do you with Jesus. He already knows you. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strengths. He knows the things that you feel like, God, I'm inadequate. But that that you're inadequate is what he wants to use. And so the beauty of a relationship, not religion, a relationship with the Lord is you be honest. Lord, what are you doing? I don't understand. God, help me. Help me do what you're calling me to do. I think about the scripture that even says, Lord, I want to believe, but help my unbelief. Don't sit up there. I'm walking by faith. I tell you, I love God. He's ahead of my life. No, he's not. He's not. You won't even let that relationship go. You can't even let it go because you can't see that he really has something else better for you. But it's like, what if it don't come? What if I be by myself? I'm, I'm hitting 37 and I'm not married yet. What does that mean? So what? You would rather be with somebody that he didn't have for you and hope that work out, waste half of your life, then to let it go, trust him, let him do something in you so that you can be what you require. Because you know, we like to require stuff that we not. You know, Lord, bring me a king. I want somebody that work. We not even queen material. We don't even do half of the stuff. We got more debt, but we want them to come and provide. Like we, God say, no, I want to work on you. I'm going to bring you a husband, but let's deal with you first. But we don't want that. We don't want that. And so I want to encourage you, don't hesitate, don't linger because he's doing more than one thing. Trust God, trust the process. And here's what I want to tell you too with that. I thought about James 1. Um, James 1 is a great chapter to read because a lot of times, just like me in that situation, when my godmother had to remind me, he's trying to give you everything. It don't feel like it. <laughs> Sometimes the way God take us, the path, you'll be like, like, it's dark, okay? It's dark. But y'all, you have to trust him. I can't say that enough. And you can only trust somebody you know. You can only trust somebody that you have a relationship with. Listen, I don't play about my kids. My kids can't go everywhere. I'm just that mama. I, you, I, you know, I could know that you have great things. You got a nice house, a big fitness center in the back that's all great but if i don't know you i don't have a relationship not my friend told me about you no we have a relationship i don't release my kids to you my kids can't just come to your house they i'm sorry they can't 
because I recognize that I am to cover these children. I am responsible for them. And in one moment, what I've been doing, you could undo in 10 minutes. So it matters. I say that to say we have to recognize y'all that in our relationship, we get to be honest with God. He already knows, but as we talk to him, then he perfects and he's He's doing more than one thing. And that's what I love about James 1 because James 1 lets us know, listen, ain't nobody promised y'all it was going to be good because you gave your life to the Lord. Let me go and give you a newsflash. Sometimes it get worse, but it's, it's sweet because of who he is. When you can go through trials and experience that peace I talked about on Monday, supernatural peace, y'all, that, that is a beautiful thing, but that only comes through Jesus Christ. And so I wanna encourage you to read James 1 because the beauty about it is, James 1, go ahead and prepare you. It lets you know you're gonna go through some hard stuff. You're gonna go through some trials. You're gonna go through some pains, but here's the thing. It says, consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance. Listen, the testing of your faith produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. Wait a minute, so the hell in my life is gonna lead to inner peace. That don't make sense. Trust me, it will. I think about, because let me tell you why. Let me explain that part, because that don't make sense. I'm going through hell, but you telling me the scripture says it's going to lead to inner peace. Like what? I don't even feel peaceful no day. Because when you know your God, when you begin to see him work, that Olivia situation, y'all, even me knowing the Lord, I grew spiritually. I didn't just arrive. I didn't start out in that situation. Yes, now I had a resolve. I wasn't aborting my baby. But that don't mean every day I was waking up and he said, God, no, I cried. I was hurt. I was confused. I'm like, Lord, what's going on? But every day he was faithful. Every day he was strengthening me. Every day he was building endurance. So right about now, y'all, there's things that kind of my life, them things don't move me because I'm like, I done birthed a child and I live because God was faithful when they said I was going to die. Come on, I like some things don't move me no more. Because guess what? God did something in me. He had to mature me. And th that thing where I, it looked like it was coming to take me out, it strengthened me. It only put more boldness in me. It equipped me for the next things that God had for me to do. So I want to encourage you, don't run from those obstacles. Don't linger. When God tells you, let it go, y'all, let it go. When he says, look, get rid of it, drop it like it's hot. Okay, bye. Like just... You ain't worth it because he never requires you to give up something that he does not give you better. I want to say that again. He never requires you to give up something that he doesn't give you better. And he never requires you to do something that he hasn't equipped you. He's already got it, but it's going to be through him and his strength that it gets done. So the last part of that before I leave says, and let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. That's what he's trying to get us to. And I don't know about you, but I'm not perfect. So that means I got a long way to go on this journey. And I don't think we are gonna be perfect until we reach Jesus. So unless you're trying to go to him today, I don't know, maybe you are, I hope not. But <laughs> unless you're going to see him today, we got a long way on this journey because we're not perfect. And he letting us know it's a process. And right when you think, okay, I got this now, he gonna throw something else. Because obviously there's another path that he has created you to walk on that you need to be developed for that runway. So I wanna encourage you today. I just wanted to share that. Don't delay, don't linger, let it go. Trust God, trust his process and know that he is faithful. He is reliable. Purposefully living, y'all, I can't say it enough, is being deliberate. It's being intentional. It's saying, God, you created me for such a time as this. You have something for me to do today. And I am coming to you to say, what is it? And listen, don't think about it. And sometimes we bite off too much. You know, we trying to, the Lord said that I was going to be a millionaire. Okay, great. What's the first stages? Because that ain't going to be today. I mean, you know, we have this, 
But can you just start with putting $50 away every day? I mean, every paycheck. You don't even do that. But you holding on to this work. There's stages. We have to be intentional. We have to be deliberate in what we do. Lord, I want these children. They're going to be great businessmen. They're going to be this. They're going to be used for you. Okay, but you won't even sit down and talk to them. When is the last time you just sat down with your six-year-old and said, what do you like? What do you love? What could you, what would you like for mommy and you to do today? What's on your mind? Like, when do you just talk to your kids? Not go do this, put that up. Did you watch that? Did you do such and such? No, I am interested in you. Mommy just wants you to know I love you today. What, what's on your heart? Yeah, they, they what they want to be going to change 50 million times. But sometimes it's just getting in their world, loving on them. Kids spell love through time. And so we want to create these great people that we don't even want to spend time with. We don't even want to deal with them. We just want to throw them in front of a computer, throw them in front of a video game, hope they don't bother us, but then they're going to be great. How? You are their coach. You are their pastor. Sit yourself down and begin to teach them the word of God. You take one scripture and let them know why this is scripture is important to write where they are. So y'all, I just wanted to tell you today, don't be like Lot and please don't be like his wife. When the Lord requires some things of you, first of all, make sure you really want what you ask. If you say you want to go higher in him, know that it's going to require something. There's a sacrifice. Listen, you're going to have to be willing to listen to sit in his presence, turn off the TV, turn off the phone, get in your word, be ready for what he's going to require, but know that it's always going to work for your good. So Latrice Bartley with Beauty and Purpose, pray you were blessed. Don't linger. Don't hesitate. Trust the process and trust him. Bye.